kidding. So, hey, uh, Karen and Brett were good friends of ours, and just fell in love with them. And then when Brett died, it was a Brett died. It was a, just a, a tragedy that was, you know, why God why is the name of the book. But Karen has pulled herself up and just been amazing. You know, some some people get bitter and some people get better. And you saw the things Karen teaches at the Bible school I went to and, and teaches over 350 times a year. That's way more than I do. Teaches over 350 times a year. Amazing speaker, amazing woman of God. We're so blessed to have her in our life, to have her here. And just great friends of our family for many, many years. Would you please welcome Karen Jensen as she comes and ministers to us today. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Hey, but as you're sitting down, turn and look at your neighbor and say, you look fabulous today. Because you just can't hear that too many times, can you? You better come to church and get encouraged. All right, so how many of you have children? Raise your hand. Yay. How many of you have grandchildren? Yay. How many of you know a child? <laughs> Good, you're in the right place this morning then. We're going to start out talking about parenting, okay? And we're going to kind of continue on tonight when we're, as we, as we um, continue, but, and, and I'll tell you a little bit about what we're going to do tonight after I capture your attention completely this morning. Um, I have a handout for you. You guys got it? All right, uh, pass out the handout while I'm kind of uh, getting started. Uh, what, what this handout is, is it's a... It's, um, let's, what do we call it? God's word for parents. How many know you can't really raise kids without the Bible? How many know all the answers are in the Bible? Aren't you glad you have a book at your house with all the answers in it? Come on. And I hope you're reading it every day because it is the guidebook for your life. It is the way you get a vision for your life. It is the way you get a vision for your children's lives. Now, you know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story as we go along, but I got surprised. I have two sons, and, and I got surprised by both of them. If you came to find out how to plan for your children, I'm not the one to talk to, okay? My husband and I got pregnant on our honeymoon, okay? So nine months later, there we were. So by the time we had our first anniversary, we had a three-month-old, okay? And so I was mostly surprised. I was surprised by both of my children. I don't know anything about planning for them. And I was probably the least equipped person to have a child. My husband and I were those kinds of people who said, if somebody said, do you want to hold the baby? We said, oh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> we had had no experience with babies. When we brought my oldest son home from the hospital, we laid him down in the middle of our bed and we looked at him and we said, now what do we do? <laughs> They'll just let anybody bring a baby home from the hospital. <laughs> Poor child, you know, you think, oh my gosh. So. You know, I guess it was because of that that I really dug into the Word of God. I read every book. I did all these things because I was clueless. And now I think it's hilarious that I travel all over the world and teach on parenting. Does God have a good sense of humor or what? So if that's you and you feel today like I have a child but, or children, but I'm not necessarily really greatly equipped to be a parent, don't worry, you're in good company. Okay? And, and you have a Bible, which means you have the answer book which means you have a way to get a vision for what it is to be a godly parent and raise a godly child. Thank God for that, right? Thank God. And so I think you're here this morning on purpose in the right place at the right time. Aren't you glad? Yes. It's good to be in the right place at the right time. And so we're going to talk to parents who have it all together. If that's you, I need to talk to you after the service because... I don't have it all together. I love, what, you said you called me an expert. I had almost laughed out loud, except my microphone was on, so I didn't. But I, I don't think there are any experts. You know what I'm saying? I think that, you know, it, sometimes people get, uh, um, um, what do I want to say, intimidated because they think some other people are experts and they aren't. But I'm telling you what, there are no perfect parents and there are no perfect kids. If your goal was to raise the perfect kid, give that one up, okay? <laughs> Just give that up for Lent and never look back because there just aren't any. And so just, you know, your goal should be to raise a kid, a godly kid, according to his word. And thank goodness you have the Holy Spirit and he helps you. I don't know how anybody could raise a kid without, without the Holy Spirit, without God to help them. And so you are equipped, okay? I think that parenting is one of the most wonderful, most frightening, most exciting, most frustrating, most rewarding jobs on the planet. 
And once you got a kid, that's it. You're a parent for the rest of your stinking life. So you might as well get good at it. Right? You might as well figure, even if you didn't know it about how to do it at the start, you might as well get to be an expert at it. You might as well find out what God has to say with it, about it, because he does have a lot of things to say, and we're going to look into his word extensively. Okay? So, um, let's see. We have a slideshow. Or who's, who do I talk to about this? Um, it should uh, appear uh, magically on the screens. Oh, look at that. There we go. So, we're going to talk about guiding your child to their destiny through faith and, the, and God's word. Let's look at the next one. <clears throat> Now, here's the deal. Your children are a blessing. That might be a revelation to some of you this morning. <laughs> but they are, okay? And they need parents. See, kids by themselves do dumb stuff. Don't they? They need someone. Oh, yeah, go ahead and show that one. They need someone to go, don't do it. Right? Look at your neighbor and say, kids need parents. They absolutely do. Let's see the next one. See, because they're not really smart. They're not born knowing stuff. They need you to help them know stuff. No, son, don't put the knife in the electric socket. Because they don't have a whole lot of common sense. This is one of my favorite pictures because it's not one of my children. <laughs> but, you know, they just don't understand some things. They need somebody to say, no, honey, get out of the fridge, literally. Kids need parents, okay? So go ahead and show me the next one. These are my wonderful children. Now, I do have to say they are practically perfect in every way. <laughs> the one on the, well, let's see, your left. Okay, the one on your right is Josh. He's the oldest. These boys are only 17 months apart, okay? <laughs> so it's kind of like having twins. So that one on your right is Joshua. He today is a, a youth pastor in Idaho. He's been there nine years, um, and he's awesome. He's just wonderful and um and he this is the kind of kid who woke up every morning of his life smiling not like me and he and it was always mom how can i help you what can i do for you okay the, the one on the other side left that's ryan he, he he's current he's been in the ministry for a while now too in tulsa and he's actually currently selling rvs and he's doing great at it he's the one if you see him on the street, you can say, thank you, Ryan, for teaching your mother about parenting. If I'd only ever had Josh, I would have wondered what was wrong with all other parents. <laughs> Why can't you raise a perfect child? It's easy. He wakes up in the morning happy. He goes to bed happy. Then there's that one. <laughs> He's the one, you know, if you've ever read James Dobson's book, The Strong-Willed Child. If you have a strong-willed child, I highly recommend that book. It's awesome. And he says, the strong-willed child is the one who, when he's born, he comes into the delivery room smoking a cigar and demanding that the temperature be changed. <laughs> They're just, they just come out with personalities, don't they? So he's the strong-willed child, and uh, he's the one who taught me about parenting, the one I had to go to the word for. But they are a blessing, okay? Now, their dad, whoops, wait, one, one more back. Their dad was, uh, we were in the, min in the ministry together when um, our children were born, and uh, then when they were 12 and 13 years old, their dad went to heaven, as you saw from the video this morning. And so we were pastoring a church in Boise, and I took over pastoring the church, and the boys were 12 and 13, and today they're 29 and 30, serving God with all their hearts. And so I have a, a message of hope for parents, and for single parents especially. I'm telling you, when you do things God's way, it turns out good. God is faithful. And it turns out, I didn't know this till later, till they grew up, that if you raise great kids, people think you're great. It's awesome. You know, now while you're doing it, you don't necessarily, that's not your goal. But if you raise them according to God's word, they turn out great and people think that you're awesome. When I go to either of the churches where my boys work, they go, oh, you're the mom. I get all sorts of honor and accolades. You're Josh's mom. You're Ryan's mom. It's wonderful. Okay, now show me the next one. They got married. <laughs> Best year of my life, 2012. One got married in April. The other got married in August. That's Tara in the peach and Jacqueline in the black and white. And they are the delights of my life. It's why I look so cool today because I have daughters now. <laughs> and they dress me. They tell me what's in fashion. Oh. It's just the best thing ever. And soon we will have grandchildren. I'm so excited about it. So that's them. They got married, and now my life is exponentially better in every way. Okay. And so let's see. Uh, go ahead and show me the next one. <clears throat> 
the thing is that God has a plan for your kids. Now, I always start from your sheet of paper. I always start with this scripture. Go ahead and show it to us. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Everybody say one thing. I'm going to forget the past. I'm going to press forward. As we're talking about parenting from the Word of God this morning, and hopefully if you come back tonight, you're going to hear some things that you might have been doing wrong. Just keep smiling. Nobody will know it's you, okay? And here's the deal. If you find something from the Word of God that you've been doing wrong, just change. Just go with the Word. Don't feel bad, okay? If Paul did it, you're in good company. Paul had stuff to forget. He killed Christians. You know what I mean? So if you have stuff you need to forget, no guilt. Okay, this is a no guilt parenting seminar. Look at your neighbor and say, no guilt. So we're going to put those things behind. When you, if we talk about some things that maybe you've been doing differently than the Word of God says, you say, okay, I'm putting that behind. I'm going to change and do it right from now on. Okay? Because everywhere I go, I meet guilty parents. I think it just comes along with the job. We feel guilty, don't we? Maybe, you're, maybe I'm the only one. But we tend to feel guilty about, well, what did, I, what did I do? Where did I go wrong? Oh, my gosh, I haven't been doing it right. You know what? Forget it. Put it behind. Don't feel guilty. Let's move on. Okay, so we have to start every discussion about parenting with this scripture. Because I'm not here to make you feel bad about what you've been doing up till now. I'm here to make you feel excited about what God has planned for your future and for your children. Okay? All right, so next one. Psalm 127, 3 through 5 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. A reward. A reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man or woman who has his quiver full of them. Your children are a reward. Now, when I first had my children, of course, and was completely surprised by them and w didn't know what to do with them, I, 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 there are days, aren't there, when you're a parent and you go, This is my reward. <laughs> What did I do to deserve this? What I found is that in order to raise your kids according to the word of God in a godly manner is you have to think about them the way God does. And how does he think about them? He thinks they're a reward. He gave you your children to bless you, not to drive you nuts. And it will help you immeasurably if you think of your children like that. Now, some of you, I know, waited and, and had your children and they, you were so greatly anticipating them and you think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread and that's awesome. But I wasn't one of those parents. And so, you know, sometimes I was like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself in for? And so, you know, if that's you, I want you to change your mind. God gave you your children on purpose to bless your socks off. They are a reward. Okay, they may not look like it today. They may not be acting like it today, but they are your reward. Change your mind. You know, that's what renewing your mind is. You get that, right? It's changing your mind to match what God says. That's what renewing your mind is. So change your mind. Your children are a reward. We're going to talk just this morning, kind of set the stage for using your faith in the Word of God to raise great kids. Okay? So let's look at the next one. And you know, the only way to do that is the word, with the Word of God. That's why I've given you a sheet of paper, okay? Because I can't come home with you. I'm not going to raise your kids. Sorry, already done. You're going to raise your kids. You're going to have to get into the Word of God. You're going to have to read these scriptures on this piece of paper more than once, okay? More than 10 times, okay? More than 100 times. That's why I'm giving it to you to take home with you, okay? These verses that I'm, we're going to talk about this morning are giving you faith for raising your kids God's way. And I'm not going to do it for you, okay? So, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Do you know that God knows the plan he has for your children and for your family? He has a good plan, a good plan. No matter what's going on in your world today, right now, no matter what's going on with your kids, God sees it turning out good. He knows the plan. Aren't you glad, A, somebody knows one, and B, it's a good plan. And so we want to stay with God because he has a plan. You know, your child was born into this world for a purpose. That's why we call, I call my series Parenting with a Purpose. We're not just parenting, waiting for them to turn 18 and leave home, and you're done. You know, I have news for you. You're never done. You're going to be the parent for the rest of your life. 
And so we, know, we have to know God has a good plan. By faith, we look at our child, our children, and say, God has a good plan for you, baby. And your job as a parent is to help them through their childhood to their divine destiny. We're not, we're not lazy parents. We're helping them fulfill their divine destiny. Every one of them has a call of God on their life. Maybe not to be a preacher, maybe not to be in the fivefold ministry, but to do something for the Lord. We're raising up an army for God here. You have a purpose. And God knows what the plan is, and that's the good news, is that you're headed for something. We're walking it out every day. We're believing him every day. We have a vision for our children's lives, and we're guiding them to their divine destiny. It's a big job, but you can do it. Look at your neighbor and say, you can do it. You absolutely can. And the good news, let's look at the next one, is the kids come with an instruction manual. Ta-da! It is the word of God. Show me the next one. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. You know, you and I can't see our futures. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But we have something that will shine a light down that path and show us the way to go. And it's the same when you're raising your kid. The word of God is your instruction manual for children. And that's why I've given you a sheet of paper with the, with the instructions on it. You're going to have to read them again and again and again. Keep your faith up to do this parenting thing. But aren't you glad you have an instruction manual? Yes. You're not out here on your own wondering how to do this. You know, I teach this all over the world. Uh, amazingly enough, I wondered when I first started if it would, you know, if it would work in, in, in East Germany and Greece and some of the crazy places that I've taught parenting. I thought, is this an American thing, God, or will it work everywhere? And it turns out it'll work everywhere. And I have people all from America, from all over the world, come up to me after I've taught this and go, thank you. We wanted to know how to raise our kids God's way. We just didn't know how. And it's not hard once you get the instruction manual going. I know men, how many of you have ever tried to put something together without the instructions? Come on, admit it. You know you have. And how many of you had like parts left over when you were done? You know, real men do read instructions. Because when you read the instructions, things turn out better, don't they? When you read God's instruction manual for raising your kids, things turn out better. You, I, I, you know, you've come too late to tell me that it doesn't work. Because it does. Amen. Thank God for his word. All right, next one. And here's another thing I want you important to know. Look at look the, uh, Luke, Luke 4, 18. This is when Jesus is talking in the temple, and he takes the word of God, and he reads it, and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to set the captives free. You know the one, right? And on that day, he read those scriptures to the Jews, and they'd never heard anybody read them the way he read them that day, because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. He was the one. Well, let me ask you this. Where does the Spirit of the Lord dwell today? In you, right? Point at yourself and say, in me. That's where he dwells today. So you can say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And if you're a parent, that means you're called. The spirit of the Lord is upon you to be the parent. I'm telling you what, when I learned that, it changed my life as a parent. As your pastor would say, it changed my life, man. Totally changed my life because I found out, oh my gosh, I have supernatural help from God to parent these children. Oh, thank God. I wouldn't want to do it without him. And you do too. You know, I often have people come up to me or raise their hand during a, you know, parenting seminar and say, now what do I do with my son who this and this and this and this? And I'm like, you know what? I don't know, but you do. You're anointed to be the parent. <laughs> I'm not at your house. I don't know the dynamics of what's going on. I don't know, but, but you do. You are raising your kid or your children with supernatural help. Stop depending on just yourself and go, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm anointed to be the parent. That's huge. You have to remember that about yourself all the time. And it's not because you're so great. It's because he lives in you. Right? So you are anointed to be the parent. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 says, 20 to 24 says, he who calls you is faithful who will also do it. Now, does that mean that the Holy Ghost is going to show up at your house and cook the breakfast and, you know, raise the kids? No. You're going to do that. But he's in you to do what he said he was going to do. He has a good plan. And, he's, and you're anointed by his spirit to be the parent. Don't raise your kids on your own. Do it with the Holy Ghost. 
Okay? Look at your neighbor and say, you're anointed to be a parent. I'm telling you, the way you get this anointing is to have kids. That's it. That's all you got to do. If you have a kid, you're anointed to be the parent. All right? I pray that that dawns on your spirit. I'm not just saying this to your head. This has to go deep inside of you. You have to go, oh, wait a minute. I'm anointed by God to be the parent of my children. Man, when you're anointed, that means you know stuff. You, you, you know what to do. Have you ever, as, if you're a parent, have you ever looked at your kid and thought, oh, dear God, I don't know what to do? If you haven't, you just haven't had them long enough yet. But now, instead of that, say, well, I'm anointed to be the parent. So the Spirit of the Lord is helping me. Because we need help. Parents need help. Grandparents need help. Church members who work with kids. You know what? As a body of Christ, we are responsible for each other in ways. You know what I'm saying? If you know a kid, you're responsible for this. To surround them with your faith, okay? And so God is going to do it. Wherever you are right now, God has a way to fulfillment, to joy. He is faithful who called you. Whoops, I'm sorry. It was, yeah. He who calls you is faithful. He will also do it. He knows how to bring things back around with your family. Moms, dads, grandparents, keep believing over your children, okay? He knows. And so we're going to look to God's word. And here's something I want to add really fast is that, you know, we're going to talk tonight about correction, discipline, you know, obedience, which is a key, key thing for your child. How many want an obedient child? Life goes much better, doesn't it? Much better. And so, but that it comes from relationship, do you know, you, you can't correct somebody you don't have relationship with. Moms and dads, if you aren't playing with your kids and loving on your kids, you don't have enough relationship to tell them what to do. You know, it's like, I use the example of relationship for correction. Say I'm done preaching here this morning, and one of you who I've never met comes up to me and says, well, Karen, I don't really like the way you were talking about this and such. You should say it this way. You know what I'm liable to say to you because I don't know you is, eh, thanks, and ignore you. Okay, but Pastor Glenn and Theresa, who I've known for 20 years, <laughs> if one of them came up to me and said, now Karen, you know the way you said something such and such, you, you might think about saying it this way, I would listen to them. Why? I have a relationship with them. I know that they are for my, they, they want things the best for me. They're not saying, they wouldn't be saying that if it was for their benefit or they, you know, because they want to prove how smart they are. But they would say it to me for my benefit. Why? We have relationship. And so that means I can listen to them. Same with your children. First, you've got to love them and play with them and help them. And they've got to know that you love them above all things. And then you can correct them. That's just a, that's just a preview to what we're going to talk about tonight. Okay. All right. Next one. When you start thinking like God thinks, you'll start to talk like he talks, and you'll start to live like he lives. In other words, we've got to renew our mind to what God says about your children, to how you want to see your children's lives develop. You know, you, there's always an answer, and God has it. Stop looking somewhere else for the answer for your children and for your family. Here it is. If you have a Bible, how many of you have a Bible? Woo, yay, answer book, you've got it. It lives at your house. Isn't that awesome? Aren't you glad? And so when, that's how you start to think about parenting. If you think about yourself as anointed, if you think about your children as a reward, how many know it'll go different at your house? Yes. Right? And so we want to think the way God thinks. You know what? God's never confused. He's never hopeless. He's never wondering how it's going to turn out. He's the God of answers. He's the God of hope. He's the God of wisdom. Without it, you is dumb. <laughs> we need wisdom when we're parents, don't we? Yes, and our God is the God. See, and so, you know what, parents? This holds you accountable for living a godly life. God gave you kids so that you would live your life right. And if you follow him with all your heart, and you follow what his word says about children, then they'll follow him. It just works that way. Okay? All right. And so you want to, even as a parent, you want to lead your children to God and his word. You know, I remember after my husband died and my sons were 12 and 13, many times they would ask me for something. You know, Mom, blah, 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 can I have this and that? And I would say, ask your father, capital F. I, you know, because I knew that I could be somewhat of a source for my kids, but I wanted to turn them to the great source. You know, God doesn't have any grandkids. 
You want to raise up kids who have relationship with their Heavenly Father. And the only way you can do that is to bring them to His Word as well. Thank God for the Word. All right? All right, so let's go to the next one. So we're going to talk about surrounding your children with faith and love. And if it was easy, everybody would do it. You can't surround your children with faith and love without the Word of God. Okay? And, and this is a lifelong thing. No matter what age your children are, you're always going to be the parent. Uh, you know, I, I have a daily devotional back there uh, at my table. Uh, it's 31 days. And what it is is scriptures and confessions. In fact, I'll read day 11 to you. It says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, 1 John 4, 4. And the confession is, The greater one lives in my children today. He helps them, guides them, encourages them, protects them, and empowers them. He's greater than any plan or force of the enemy and causes my children to overcome in every situation of life. Woo! I feel good just reading that. And so, you know, it says that it's for 31 days. You can read one per day, but let's face it, there's some days you need to read them all. The reason I wrote them down in book form is because on some days I couldn't think of one good thing to say. I needed it written down. I needed help. I needed the word of God in front of me and a confession to say about them. And you know what? I still use this today. My kids are 29 and 30 years old and I still use this. You're still going to always be the parent. You're still always going to need to surround your children with faith and love because that's how it works, okay? And so, go ahead and show me the next one. How do we surround our children with faith and love? Romans 14, 17 says, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Listen, we have to teach our children that being a Christian is awesome. Life is not a bummer. It's great to be a Christian, okay? And so that's the first thing we do when we surround them with faith and love is that under, let, you need to understand and they need to understand we are a faith family. We're going to believe God come hell or high water. No matter what we see happening all around us, life is not a bummer when you're a Christian. Righteousness, peace, and joy, that's your heritage in the, in the Lord. So first you parents have to think that and then you have to teach it to your children because that's, that's how God thinks. That's how we start surrounding our children with faith and love. Show me the next one. There is a story in this book, Ministering to Your Family, by Kenneth E. Hagen in chapter 4 called Surrounding a Teenager with Faith and Love. I'm going to tell you the story really fast, okay? Um, um, there was a woman who came up to Brother Hagen at a meeting that he was preaching, and she said, and she's crying and crying. She says, Brother Hagen, will you pray with me? I have a 16-year-old son, and he is falling off the, the deep end. You know, his father is gone. It's just him and me. He's going out all hours of the night. He's hanging out with the wrong people. I'm so afraid for him. I, and every time the phone rings, I think it's the police calling to tell me that he's in jail, and I just don't know what to do. Will you pray with me? And Brother Hagen looked at her and said, no. She went, why? He said, because if I pray with you, you will undo our prayer with all your fear and doubt. And so he stopped and he talked to her for a while. He said, listen, here's what I want you to do. Every time you think about your son, every time that phone rings and you think it's the police calling to tell you that he's in jail, I want you to say this. I surround him with faith and love. I declare that he will fulfill God's plan for his life. And, and he said, and Brother Hagin said, stop bothering about coming to church. She said, how do you know I've been doing that? <laughs> he said, I just know. And so he gave her some of the same scriptures that you have on your sheet of paper. And he said, I need you to be in the word. And every time you think of him, say, I surround him with faith and love. He will fulfill God's plan for his life. And, and off they went. And they prayed with her, you know. And then, and then about a year later, a, a lady came up to him at a different meeting and said, do you remember me? And he didn't. But she said, I'm the one you prayed for, my 16-year-old son. I have to tell you what happened. And she said, for nine months, I just kept confessing that I surround him with faith and love. He will fulfill the plan of God for his life. And how many know, it took, she goes, I did pretty good at, at first. I mean, I, I did, it took me a while to get there. How many know if you've been thinking fear and doubt for a long time, it takes a while to replace those thoughts with some good ones. And you have to have help from the word. But she said, after a while, I started doing it. For nine long months, I saw no change. Everybody say nine months. That's a long time, isn't it? When you don't see any change, you got to keep your heart and mind here so that what he's doing doesn't affect what you're believing. That's what faith is, you know. It's believing something you can't see yet. That's what faith is. And so she said one morning, he, after nine months of believing the word and, you know, believing that what we prayed was coming to pass... 
he came downstairs and, and on a Sunday morning, he'd been out till all hours of the night, Saturday night. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I thought he'd sleep half the day like he usually did. And he came downstairs and he said, mom, I want to go to church with you. And long story short, he went to church with her that Sunday morning, that Sunday night, the next Sunday morning, and the next Sunday night he got saved. And she said, Brother Hagin, you've never seen such a change in a boy. He's serving God with all his heart. He's at, he's at church every time the doors are open. He's involved in the youth group. He's witnessing for Christ at his school. And I just wonder what would happen if that mama had kept him surrounded with her fear and doubt instead of her faith and love. Now, is it all up to us? No, of course not. But does God need us to keep our faith on our children? Yes. yes. Show me the next one. Job 3.25 says, The thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. It's not okay to be afraid over your children. In Job, the thing he feared came upon him. Don't be drawing the thing you're afraid of towards your children. Use your faith. Surround them with faith and love. Stop being afraid. If you find yourself fearing, get out that sheet of paper and read it. The only way to displace fear is with faith. So if you find yourself afraid, you know, I, I was preaching this one time and a lady came up to me and she goes, you know what, after you talked about it's not okay to fear, I realized that I had always been afraid that my children would be um, abused at their daycare. Stop that. Stop that. You're a person of faith. Surround them with your faith and love, not your fear. You don't want that coming upon them. Show me the next one. <laughs> no fear, only faith. The story in Mark 5, 36 is the story of Jairus, who comes up to Jesus and said, come and pray for my daughter, she's sick at home. You know the story, Jesus says, yes, I'll go. On the way, they run into the woman with the issue of blood, and he stops and heals her. By the time they're headed towards the house, Jairus' servant comes to, comes to him and says, don't trouble the master any further, your daughter's dead. If you read that story, you find that Jesus whips around, points his bony finger in Jairus' faith and says, ah, 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 no fear, only faith. Don't fear, only believe. Because Jesus had to have something to continue that miracle. This is the Son of God. He's on the way to the house. You know how it turns out. She is dead, and he raises her from the... Okay, because he's God. But he had to have something in that situation to be able to go and do that miracle. He had to have Jairus' faith. I am confident if that, in that moment, because the servant said, go away, she's dead. If, if Jairus had said, too late, she's dead, Jesus would have had to stop and go, okay, too late, she's dead. But instead, he said, don't say it, don't, don't fear. Right here, Jairus, this is a crucial point of faith. Don't you do it. No fear, only faith. And Jairus doesn't say anything. You know, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And so they continue to the house, and Jesus raises her from the dead. Don't be afraid over your children. Show me the next one. Because faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you have fear over your children, get into the word. Read those scriptures that I've given you. Get your faith working on them. Be determined to surround them with faith and love. Okay, show me the next one. Four times the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Keep going. Those are them. All of the times. Those are on your sheet of paper. The just shall live by faith. God, that's how his plan is for your life. He says it in the Old Testament. He says it in the New. You've got to believe something you can't see yet. You are the justified. This is how we live our life. Come to grips with it. You're a faith person. Start using it. And faith comes from where? By the word of God. Exactly. Next one. There's a story in Exodus 2 about Jochebed, whose son is Moses. And you know the story. She puts Moses in a, in a basket in a river in a country where Pharaoh is killing babies that look just like him. What a faith mama. I'm telling you what. If she put her baby in a basket in a country, in, in, in a country where they're killing babies that look just like him, sends him down the river, you know, and Pharaoh's daughter ends up with him. She finds him and she holds him up. She goes, oh, look, it's one of those babies that dad's trying to kill. Let's keep him. <laughs> so Moses gets raised in the, in the house of Pharaoh because God's working on a plan. If he could send her, she could send her baby in a river in a country where they're killing babies that look just like him, you and I can send our children out into the world every day with faith because we don't surround them with our fear. Next one. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust, trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding of what's going on. 
in all your ways acknowledge him, trust him, and he will direct your path and your children's path as well. Trust him. He knows how to take care of your kids. Keep them surrounded with your faith, not your fear. Next one. We have to speak the word over our children. Romans 4, 17 says, God calls those things which be not as though they were. This is how you keep your children surrounded with faith. You say what God says about them. And that's why I've given it to you on a, on a sheet of paper. You say what God says. What bees not in your child's life today? Do they be not obedient? Do they be not good at math? Do they be not good at picking up their room? Do they be not good at listening? Do they be not? Then God says, call those things which be not as though they were. Start saying, you obey every time. You are fulfilling God's plan for your life, right? No matter what you see, that's what faith does. Faith believes something you can't see yet. This is how you do it, by releasing faith from the words of your mouth. And you can't do it by yourself. You've got to have the word in there to be released. Got it? That's why I put it on a sheet of paper for you for, to take home. Look at the next one. Be, what B's not right? Keep going. Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in what? Whose tongue? Yours. Not mine, not your pastor's. His, faith, his power is in his tongue for his house, but your power is in your tongue. Ask yourself, what have I been saying? What have I been saying over my children? What have I been saying over my grandchildren? What have I been saying over so-and-so's children in the church? Use your power for good, not for evil. Death and life, right here. <laughs> your tongue. Next one, Mark eleven twenty three. 23. What, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. I hate to tell you this, but right now you have what you've been saying. I'm leaving town after this. It's okay. You can hate me. It's all right. But change what you're saying. You can have what you say. All right? Next one. See, you got to see your, your children how God sees them. Now, these are, these are scriptures for you to speak over your children. They are written on your sheet. He who began a good work in my child is faithful to complete it. You know, your child's not done yet. They're only half-baked. <laughs> and in fact, no matter how old they are, if we aren't on the victory side yet, then we aren't done yet. He who started a good work is faithful. Who's faithful? He is. Right? We're, we, our great faith is not in our children's ability to get this or our ability to get it to them. Our faith is in God. Okay? And so he who began a good work is faithful to complete it. Philippians 2.13, it's God who's working in them. Aren't you glad? It's not them. It's not you. It's God working in them both to, both to will and to do his good work. Hebrews 12.2, 12, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He started, if it's not, it's not over yet, so he's a good finisher. Okay? These are things that you speak over your children. This is how we keep them surrounded with faith. Next one. Pray for them. These are the prayers to pray over your children. Look them up yourself, all right? We don't have time this morning to look them up. This, these are the ones that says, God, give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. The eyes of their understanding being enlightened that they may know the hope of their calling. Because every one of your children is called to do something for God. That's why we're born onto this planet in the last days. They all have a gifting. They all have a destiny. And these are the things we can pray over them, not at them. You know, there's a difference, right? Don't hit them over the head with the Bible. Tell them the good news part. Okay, next one. It takes <laughs> patient daily training. Parenting is a very daily exercise. And not every day you don't see great victories. Some days they'll do be doers of the word and you'll go, oh my gosh, they really have been listening. Hallelujah. But some days they don't act like it. All right, these are scriptures that you can take to believe for wisdom, to believe that God has a great direction for them, to keep them surrounded with your faith, all right? So that is the beginning part that I just want to put into your heart. You're anointed. Your kids have a divine plan, a divine destiny. God has a good plan for their life, and you yourself can keep them surrounded with faith. Tonight we're going to talk about correction, obedience, discipline, things like that. We're also going to talk about teenagers and the roles that you have as a different kind of parent. I want to make you aware out there at the table, I have a DVD series and a CD series, depending on whether or not you like to watch or listen. 16 half-hour lessons on parenting, okay? More than we're ever going to get to tonight. 
everything from keeping them surrounded with faith, and there's five lessons on obedience and correction, plus things like uh, conflict resolution, helping them learn good manners, helping them love to learn, teaching them about money, all of that is out there, okay? Both of them are $40 for the DVD or the CDs, all right? And, and then this, which I talked about already, I think every parent needs one of these because there are days when you cannot possibly think about a good thing to say about your child. You need help. Okay? All right. And then also back out there, uh, you saw the ad for my book, Why God Why. Um, it's a great book. If you know anybody who's ever had something terrible happen to them and they're stuck in the valley of why, this is a handbook for getting past the pain. Okay? It's got uh, confessions and things at the end of each chapter. And it's on sale today. Okay? I know that you have them available in your bookstore, but the autograph copies go for um, $19.99. Today only, because I'm here, I will sign it for you. And you only have to pay 15 bucks, okay? So come back and see me at the table afterwards, and I will see you tonight. Yeah. Straight word. <laughs>